When you're solving for how electric fields relate on one side of a boundary and the other, we've got to think about a point essentially at the interface, like this point right here, and figure out what the electric field is at that point and how it relates to the electric field at a point just on the other side of the interface. And we know something about the kind of fields that we're going to be sending from region 1 towards region 2. Let me remind you about the animation that we've watched many times about a plane wave that's propagating in free space. And as I run it, you can see that there's electric field everywhere in space with these sorts of phase relationships. And if I just sort of pause it, you can see there's a region here where the electric field is fairly uniform. And the, so the derivative of this is essentially zero right here. If I move a little bit to the right, the electric field doesn't change. Whereas if I go into this region over here and I move a little bit to the right, the electric field is changing a lot. So we have some different regions where the derivative of the y component of the field versus the x direction is changing, and other regions where the derivative of the y component of the field versus the x direction is remaining constant. Here's a boundary, and what we're interested in is how this field changes versus the x direction. So I might say that in general, boundary conditions are about how field components vary versus the x direction normal to the interface. Now that sign field that we just saw is smooth everywhere, which is to say the electric field doesn't change abruptly if I make a motion in the y direction, where it doesn't change at all, or in the z direction coming out of the plane of the page at you, where it doesn't change at all, or in the x direction where the electric field is changing but smoothly. It's a smooth evolution. And mathematically, when you say something has a smooth evolution, what we're saying is that the derivative of the y component of the electric field versus x is finite. That is the equivalent statement to saying that the electric field component y is continuous. Now the reason we care about continuity is that we did find in our previous video about the perpendicular component electric field that it's not continuous across the boundary. What we found, if we looked at the perpendicular component of the electric field in this region, it was not equal to the perpendicular component of the field in this region. It was in fact related to it by the ratio of the refractive indices squared. So that's an example of a field component here and here that's discontinuous, and that's not surprising because the, the, because the refractive index itself, which is continuous within one region, abruptly changes when it goes into another region. So it's not that surprising that there'd be an abrupt change. And when we say that it has an abrupt change, mathematically, that means that we're saying that the derivative of EX, the perpendicular component, the derivative of EX with respect to X is infinite at the boundary. So it's not surprising that we learn something about DEX DX at the boundary when we analyzed for the perpendicular component because that came from analyzing uh, the divergence of electric field at the boundary. That's the Maxwell equation that we analyzed to learn this, and the divergence of E mathematically has dex dx in it. Now we want to think about the other components. We're now curious, we're asking questions about dey dx, how does the y component electric field vary as we cross a boundary, and dz dx. We want to know if those fields are continuous across the boundary. We want to know if they ever have infinite derivatives. So we're asking, are they always finite? Again, we found that dex dx wasn't finite because 
the refractive index had a step change. So it had a derivative, which was infinite as we went across x equals 0. And that had a consequence that dex dx also had a step change. What about dey and dez? Well, these derivatives, these derivatives show up not in the divergence of electric field, but in the curl of electric field. So now we want to analyze the curl. So we grab another Maxwell equation for the curl of E and ask what we know about its components and whether those derivatives will be finite. Well, the curl of E has three components, so let's write them down. So here's the first component, the x hat component of the curl. And notice that these two derivatives are with respect to y and z. Within a single region, we've got some plane wave coming in this way, or reflected wave coming off that way, maybe. But whatever's going on in here, there are no sudden changes in refractive index. And we don't expect any sudden changes in the electric field components as we move around in this one material, just like we wouldn't expect sudden changes if we moved around within a single plane wave. So since these are y and z derivatives, those don't cross the boundary. And we would expect both of these derivatives, this one and this one, to be finite because they're not perpendicular to the interface. So I'll just write here that they are finite and move on because we haven't even seen any derivatives with respect to x yet. So the next one looks like this. We've got a y hat term. And now the y hat component of the curl is going to have one more derivative that's with regards to z, uh, a component not crossing the interface. But then we've got a derivative dez dx. So that's now telling us how one of the parallel components electric field varies as we cross the interface. Now, by the same logic of these two derivatives being finite by knowing that this field is not going to vary discontinuously within one region, we can similarly rule this term out and say that's finite. So that just leaves us with this one term. And then let's write down the third part of the curl. And in this case, we again have one derivative, which we just know to be finite because it doesn't cross the boundary. And we've got another one where we're not sure yet. So we've got our two x derivatives for the two parallel components of the electric field. And we want to ask the question, do we know that these two are finite? Because if they're finite at the boundary, then we know that there's, unlike dx dx, there would be no abrupt change. Here's where it's important to come back to the Maxwell equation that we're actually analyzing at the boundary. We're not just taking the curl, we're relating it to something. Just like we related the divergence electric field to something which led to this equation, the curl electric field is equal to that. And the important thing is that this doesn't have any abrupt changes in it because it's not a spatial derivative. Spatially, there's something abrupt happening in this problem that we go from one refractive index to the other. But in time, the magnetic field, we know that the time derivative of the magnetic field just brings down a factor of minus i omega. So this becomes positive i omega b. And in this problem, the magnetic field is nowhere infinite, not, in, not on one side or the other side. At no point are we saying the field itself is infinite. And that, importantly, means that this is finite. All the components of this expression are finite. So all the vector components of the curl of E have to be finite. Well, that means that this term is finite. The the sum of this and this are finite. And if this term is finite, then this term can't be infinite because that would lead to the overall y component being infinite. So therefore, dz dx is finite. And that means that ez is continuous at the boundary. The exact same logic goes down here because this, enti this entire curl component has to be finite. The curl components are all finite. 
And we know that one of the terms is, is, is finite because the field doesn't change abruptly on one side of the interface. That leaves one other term, which also has to be finite because there'd be nothing to balance it out if it, was, if it was infinite. So this leads us to conclude that dEy dx is finite and therefore Ey is continuous at the boundary. We've already seen this in animations. Let me run this for you and remind you that what we're seeing here is that the electric field, the total electric field on the left, equals the total electric field on the right at the boundary. That's why wherever we freeze this, this black curve, the sum of the electric fields, exactly matches up with the transmitted field's amplitude at the boundary. They're sort of tied to each other. It doesn't matter where we freeze it, it always goes through and attaches smoothly. That's because the Y component of the electric field of a plane wave coming in to a boundary will always match the Y component on the other side. The incident plus reflected beam will equal the transmitted beam. So now we've done it. We've found out all three components of the electric field at the boundary. We found out that, D, that EX, the normal component, is discontinuous at the boundary, but EZ and EY are continuous at the boundary. They, they attach, hold hands across the boundary. Your homework will be to come up with the similar rules for the perpendicular and parallel components of the magnetic field. And of course, that's going to involve analyzing the other two Maxwell equations, not the two for divergence and curl of E, but those for divergence and curl of B.